Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh. With Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. We got a glimpse there of what it takes to be Heather Abraham. Yeah, to make all of this happen, <laughs> which is as much effort as I can give at 2 a.m. Sometimes you need a little boost mid-morning, and that includes Velcro rollers. There you go. Work fabulously, yeah. by the way. All right. And See, very little I, I can, effort. You I just continue kinda to learn things, yeah. Roll it up. Just roll it right. up. It's not the curling iron where you're constantly. But you gave us a little peek into the, the process that but, goes in, what goes into becoming Heather Abraham? This is not me being mad at you. This is just me venting that you don't have to do what like, you don't have to use a blow dryer. And if you do, it's for like a minute, you know? Yeah, I do use a blow dryer, but it yeah. is not for long because no. my hair is short. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the, the brush and the, and it's just, and your arms are constantly getting tired. It's just so tiring to blow dry in style. Is it not? This is why eventually I will cut my hair off again. All right, you heard it here first. It's going to happen. She keeps threatening to do it. She's going to do it sooner or later. Because I'm so <laughs> sick of washing it. I was down to washing my hair once a week. Once a week. That's all I had to do. Could get away with it. I don't know. Okay, I continue to learn things on this show. Rant over. Okay, that's it. That's all. Uh, hey, we want to talk about something that you might be dealing with right now, and that is allergies. If you feel it in the air, and both Heather and I have been dealing with this, this is why you have glasses on today. Yeah, it's like my eyes have poison ivy right now. Uh, well, uh, we sat outside the other night just for a couple, like 20 minutes, yeah. and my eyes were burning. And, you know, and I think a lot of other people are going through this too because the trees are releasing so much pollen right so now. Much. And so we learned something that, uh, that I it was new to me. I did not know this. It turns out there are male and female trees. You knew this. I did know this. And not all plants are male and female. There are some that are both. Okay. You know that. But then there are some species that are male and some female. I knew this because when I was a reporter in Brooklyn, there was a whole community in Brooklyn that was complaining because at some point in the city's history, they planted, or the borough's history, they planted a bunch of ginkgo trees right. that were the wrong sex. I think they were ma uh, female trees, and they stink. They, st I mean, I, well, when I went out there, I was like, I can see why you might be upset about this. Right. So here's the point of why we brought this up. Uh, there is a horticulturalist that says botanical sexism is, is making allergies worse in cities and towns. And this is because the USDA said, like a long time ago, like in the 40s, said you should plant male trees. Oh, so that's what it is. They were male trees. The male stink. <laughs> is it the male stink? Because they they said that the so anyway the male trees <laughs> release more pollen and then the female trees try to trap the pollen to fertilize eggs. But many towns planted male trees for decades, yeah. and so now in towns at least that might be a reason why allergies are worse. Because some there's more pollen because of a, a recommendation from the USDA. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So anyhow, there you go. You can blame it on that. It is bad, and you know, my allergies didn't pick up until we traveled to Florida, and we drove through North Carolina, and you've seen those images. Is it yeah. like the pine? Well, you can see in the air the pollen. That, and <laughs> we drove through, and I was like, oh, look how pretty everything's in bloom here. And then, like, hours later, I was like, oh, I can't breathe. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just rubbing my, my eyes so itchy. It doesn't take long, actually. <laughs> no. Um, so this is exciting. Steven Spielberg, his latest thing is he's coming out with a West Side Story movie. Yes, Heather, you're called <laughs> on. <laughs> I've never seen West Side Story. You've never seen West Side Story? I this, don't... Is where, this is where, you know, where you have the <laughs> movie admission, this is where I have the admission. I've never seen it. Well, that's okay, because it's going to come out later this year, yeah. and you can take a look at it then. You can watch his <laughs> new version. Uh, but, of course, this is a remake of the classic film, and um, one of the stars in the film is local. So Maddie Ziegler, oh remember her from Dance Moms? Yes. Yeah, I mean, she was the amazing one that would win everything. Uh, she's now 18. We, of course, have done stories with her. She was in the SIA video, maybe more than one SIA video, I'm not sure. Uh, she's a dancer and actress now. She's going to be in this. Uh, but let's take a look at the trailer 
trailer for West Side Story. It was just released this week. Now, even though the movie doesn't come out into December, they want people talking about it now. The film is done, uh, but the pandemic kind of relate or delayed its release, so that's why they're waiting until December for this. But Maddie plays Velma, uh, so she's going to get to show off her dance moves. There's a lot of dancing in West Side Story. Of course, there's the Sharks and the Jets, two street gangs. She is one of the Jets girls. Um, now, the lead in the Rita Moreno there, too, she, she is playing in this as well. She was in the original. And the lead of the movie is Maria. And Steven Spielberg chose for Maria a 19 year old. And this 19 year old, actually, he chose her when she was 17. She has a YouTube channel. And we want to play for you just a, lots of people watch her YouTube channel, listen to her YouTube channel but for her singing. And one of her most popular, in fact, the most popular, we're going to play for you. There she is. We're going to play for you right now a little of her singing in the bathroom. And this is what helped her get this role. She's in the Yeah, that is oh, Rachel Zegler. She is very she talented. She is good. And so this this is at 17. Now she's 19. And she was watching the trailer. Of course, she's singing Shallow here. Uh, she was watching the trailer, according to People Magazine, at the end of watching the trailer. And this is actually on video. She says, Oh my God, I'm in a movie. Well, you oh know, my God, I'm in a movie. <laughs> I bet, I bet, you know, for your first big role, I bet there is that. Factor oh, in yeah. it all that where you're looking at it and you have that moment of realization that, oh, this is happening. This is happening. This is really like happening. that thing that we shot is actually going to come out yeah, and, and it's going to be in movie it. theaters. Yeah. yeah. So congratulations so cool. to her. It'll be fun to watch when that comes. I out. will watch it. Oh, I, oh, good. I will. Watch Maybe it. we'll go together. That would be so cute. I think we should do that. Like a little date. A little date. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> in so December. Fun. I, we're booking ahead. It's in will December. Will you get popcorn or nachos? Why don't I have both? Okay, good. When we'll you go share. to the movie theater, we'll yeah, split. have both. Okay, yeah, that's of so fun. I'm, I'm gonna park. <laughs> hey Siri, remind me to schedule a date with David in December to go see West Side Story. Okay, is she down with that? To she didn't answer back. <laughs> <laughs> she added it to my reminder. She's British, by the way. I mean, I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> well, that shallow is one of those songs that sticks in your head. It is. And we learned something today uh, that's very intriguing. Yeah. So it's a theory from this guy in Australia who's sort of the Bill Nye, the science guy of Australia. That's how he was described because we couldn't pronounce his last name. Everybody calls him Dr. Carl. And I was like, who's who is this guy? Because all it said was Dr. Carl. Right. So a, a big bunch of long letters. name. Yeah. So it turns out that Dr. <laughs> Carl, as we're going to call him, and everyone else apparently Everybody calls, him, else that calls too, him that too, says what you should do if a song is stuck in your head and you want it out of your head is to chew gum. That's all. So he says, and I want to get this right, the pathways that control your repeated jaw movements, like chewing gum, are also used for replaying music in your head. So that's how you can sort of break because there are that. some songs that you get in your head and you, all day, and then it'll come back. Come oh, back, yeah. you think you shook it and then it comes back later that night. You know what I always think is interesting is how you got the song stuck in your head. Yeah. Do you ever go home and sing songs that I've been singing all day? Yes. Yeah. You plant things and it can be something so minor. Like I just hear her from her desk, you know, singing something very, a little quick yeah. thing. And that will launch me into it. And then I'll be like, how did I get that in my head? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're very <laughs> musical. You enjoy music. <laughs> my desk all day yesterday. The only thing I kept singing from a song was, I know that's right. That's all I kept singing. Everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. But that did not launch me into uh, no, you didn't. my own you version go, of that song. You didn't I didn't go home and tell Gary, I know that's right. I didn't. <laughs> We, we want to tell you about what Billy Porter is up to, uh, another great musician, uh, and he is going to come back to Pittsburgh uh, to make a movie. Yeah, but this uh, is a different role for him, right? Well, yeah, normally he's in front of, in the, front of the camera. Yeah. I mean, people know him from Kinky Boots. People know him from Pose. Yeah. Uh, but he, he does all sorts of things. He's a CMU grad. Uh, he grew up in the East End. And uh, he's an Emmy and Tony winner. Now he's going to be behind the camera to direct a movie. Uh, and this may be the first time he did direct a movie. I'm not sure. Uh, it's going to be called What If? And it tells the story of a transgender high school student in Pittsburgh. Production begins this summer. 
That's so, really neat. Something to look forward to. Everything he does, he does so well. Yeah, and he's I've, very thoughtful. Yeah, and I, I've had the chance to talk with him, and in fact, I have his number right now. Uh, Let's call I'll do him. a little, I don't think that's a good idea. Can we FaceTime him? <laughs> Probably not. Well, what do you do? Would I don't he know. Would he take you out? Would he block you? <laughs> he might. I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, <laughs> we have become friends, and he's just a fantastic guy, and I'm so thrilled for his success. I double dog dare you to FaceTime him. Okay. In the commercial break. We'll do it. That way, if he yells at you, it won't be. It won't TV. happen live on TV. <laughs> I don't right. know where we are. This next thing <laughs> you actually found, and it was so interesting well, because it, it's all about it's all about where you park when you go to the store. And well, you have a favorite spot. I think right. most people have a favorite spot. But this do you try to get close? I, as a mom, like to park near the shop, the cart return. Yeah. And when it, when it dawned on me that that's the best thing to do, I was like, huh, why is this not something? Why moms doesn't everybody share know this? With each other. Right. Because that's the, when you're having a baby, you're like, I don't know how am I going to carry this and this and this and then. Mm -hmm. Next to the cart return. That's where you park. Not the closest. Just park next to the cart return. That makes sense. Yeah, because I don't even try for either of those. I just try. For, I like to be on my own. Yeah. I, I like to like have space to get in and out of the car. So. What is that noise? What is that noise? <laughs> is anybody else hearing a humming? There's We're being abducted by aliens in here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, anyways, so that's my advice. But this guy realized how often he was going to the grocery store. He goes mm -hmm. maybe once a week for his big shopping items, and then he goes a couple other times to pick up the smaller things. Right. So he decided to go through the painstaking tax task over six years to document parking in every space. He may have had more time on his hands than the average bear. This is but, not during, but, just during the pandemic. This is right. six, going back this, six and, years. And this is getting a lot of attention on Twitter, right? Yeah. Because so he's this, posting all this. this and so trending. people are like, holy cow. All right, so let's show you the first picture. And this is uh, in Bromley in the UK. So this is a layout of the parking lot of the grocery <laughs> store that he shops at. And the orange spots you see here are uh, the cart return, which he calls, because it's the UK, the trolley bays. See, I thought they so call cute. them buggies. I don't they, know. I'm surprised He's, they call them trolleys. He said the trolley bays. Okay. And then um, he said the next picture here shows uh, how he labeled everything. So when he did his spreadsheet, he knew like F1, F2, and so on based on rows. Okay, okay. okay. So very is, scientific. Very scientific. 211 spots he could legitimately park in. Uh huh. Based on like motorcycle and handicap spaces. So he would, couldn't park in those. He has, he has children, car. so he could park in the family spaces, so he okay. counted those in. And this <laughs> is the final document based on the colors there, as you can see in the corner. So the pink at the bottom is avoid. Avoid those spots all the way up to the god tier. Those the god, are the spots the, that so you want. So the watch. turquoise colored ones are the god tier. Yeah. So I can't tell. Is that, is that close to the store building there? It looks like it's probably yeah. the closest yeah. and the most available, you know. That like, was a lot of research for what I think most people already know, you know. That you park close. Unless, to, unless you're a parent. Unless, exactly. With young unless, kids. Then you park you, next to the cart return. That's what we've learned this morning. When I had Lila and she was like, you know, two weeks old and I went out to the grocery store for the first time and I put her in the car and I put the groceries in the car and then I had the cart, I was like, do I just leave her in the car to take this back? <laughs> right. Do I take her back out of the car now to take this back over here? And I totally get why you say what you say. Now you get it. All right. Words of advice from Heather Abraham. <laughs> Well, today is Thursday, and that means tomorrow is Friday, and that means it's time for our Friday free-for-all. So we would invite you to post your questions to our Pittsburgh Today Live Facebook page. We will try to answer as many of them as we can tomorrow, and Ron is going to join us to answer, and Mikey is going to join us to answer as well. So there's going to be four of us answering your questions. Selena happens to have the week off, so Good she cannot her. do that, but we We're will get her involved her another time. Take a look at our Instagram and be jealous. There you go. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Well, we have a really fun show today, including the hottest ticket really across the country. The immersive Van Gogh experience is selling out nationwide. And guess what? It's coming to Pittsburgh. The co-producer of this phenomenon joins us coming up later in the show. Plus, is it ever too early for margaritas? I say no. I figured and you'd say that. Especially not when Cinco de Mayo is just around the corner. We're going to check in with Chef Bill Fuller for a seasonal menu with a spicy kick. And plenty of options for things to do this weekend, especially for fans of The Simpsons and Shakespeare. How the two collide in a funny <laughs> show for kids of all ages. That's in our weekend guide with Sean Collier. It's Thursday, April 29th. Wait, what?
It's already the 29th. Okay. Yes, it is. Oh, gosh, That's where did correct. this month go? We're so glad you're spending part of your morning with us. We'll be right back. Seriously, where did April go? It flew by.